All right. So what are blend shapes? Um, blend shapes is a feature in Maya that allows us to take a model and deform it or, or blend it into uh, different shapes based on a duplicate of that model that has been remodeled into that shape. Other software might call these uh, morphing or morph targets. I think that's what the term is for like Blender. I'll show you what it is here. So let's create something. Create just a cube. And we'll duplicate that cube. Okay, so this cube here is going to be our main mesh, I guess. And this will be something that we're going to remodel. So I'm just going to remodel it very simply. And change some vertices here. Maybe I'll even do something like that. And now what I'm going to do is just connect these two um, using a blend. A blend shape is a deformer. Um, it is one type of deformer that Maya has. There are many. So if we go to the rigging drop down, um, deform, and then blend shape here, I hit create. So the important is, thing is that selecting the all the model or the remodeled objects first, and then the last object to select is the uh, where all the results are going to happen. Uh, so if this was your character, this would be the, the real mesh of your character. And now that we have that set up, we can see that when we select our cube, uh, that we have this blend shape node here. And we can see that this blend shape node is an input for this model, and it has a single channel called pcube2, which is the name of this object. So if I were to drive on this channel's value, you can see that between 0 and 1, it applies those changes to that, that geometry. And so what's, what's going on here is it's basically looking at the vertices and matching the new positions of the vertices based on you know, the model shape. Uh, generally, you only want to have one blend shape node on a, on a model. Um, you can have multiple blend targets, but um, normally you would add them only to one blend shape node. So the other thing I want to do is I was going to duplicate this again. And I'm going to show you how more than one target works. So let's remodel this one. Maybe I'll make it wider. And now what I'm going to do is select both of these and then the last one again. And we'll go up and add a new blend shape target, or excuse me, blend shape node. And again, when we select the cube, we'll see that the inputs have a blend shape node and we have two channels, one for each of the names of the, of the objects. If I drive on the first one, we get that shape just like before. If I go to the second one, drive that on, we get that shape. The other important part about blend shapes is that they're additive. So when I drive on both, we can see that now we're morphing the shape based on both of the deformations or both of the remodeled shapes on these two objects. So you can use that in all kinds of different ways to get all kinds of interesting results and behaviors on a character for all kinds of different reasons. So what reasons do we have for blend shapes? Um, a few of them. Um, blend shapes are oftentimes used for facial rigging. There's definitely a lot of other ways to do facial rigging. We can also have things called corrective deformations. So if we are if we're connecting a character's geometry to a skeleton, you can adjust how it's connected and how it deforms up to a point just with that one skin deformer. But at a certain point, there's a lot of things that you have to end up correcting that you're just not able to do with the skin deformer, and you can use blend shapes to do that. So for instance, if I'm bending my arm, eventually there's a point where this part of the arm and this part of the arm collide and squash out, and that's not something a skin deformer can do. Um, by itself, and so we can use something like a blend shape, perhaps, to uh, to add that extra feeling of collision or squishiness. I guess you also see blend shapes used for all kinds of things, like you know, you know doing like muscle muscle bulges or skin controls. Maybe you want the skin to kind of slide or, or shift or, or do like detail kind of uh, oriented controls on on a body, and you can use blend shapes for that as well. So blend shape characteristics. We've already seen how blend shapes add together. So when we have multiple targets, we can have as many targets as we want. We can add them together, just like these two shapes here. So we can see that vertices moved, moved the same width as this and also matched the same height or this you know, relative height for each of those vertices there. The next important point is that everything moves linearly uh, or interprets linearly, meaning that when, when we're deforming or, or changing the values of, of these uh, blend shape channels, it's the vertices that are actually moving, right? So the vertices are changing their position and referencing one or, or any of these the other models that are connected to it or related to these channels. But they, they always move in a straight line from where they originally started to their, their new position. So they're not going to move on any arc or anything like that. There's a few extra features for blend shapes where you can start to move things non-linearly. 
um, but it takes extra work. In that. So let's make another example here. I'm going to show you the linear interpolation really quickly. So right now I'm just going to remodel this geometry in a way that would uh, ideally rotate. There we go. And if I were to add this the blend shape again and go here, when I blend this, we can see that it moves in a straight line to that position. It doesn't arc or anything. There's nothing to force it to kind of go on a, a radius here, of course. Uh, so it is, it is moving linearly across. If I were to want to do something radially, um, normally you need something with a pivot point, like a bone or something like that. All right, so in this case, I've kind of rigged up a way to move these same vertices radially. So you can see that um, I'm moving on a pivot point. So I'm moving from there. And, and that's kind of what I would expect because of the way that it was originally modeled and where it's now positioned, right? So let me an animate this. Uh, put that at 90 and then we'll animate this one as well. And then we can kind of see the difference. There we go. So basically the exact same result. We can see that even though that the beginning and end result are the same exact shape, if you were to see in the side view, that because it's uh, you know moving linearly, that the uh, you know the shape is definitely different. We can also see that um, that we're not preserving that square um, face in this in this case. So. You know, it could be fine, depends on what you're trying to accomplish again, but it, it is a distinct difference. So, you know, you, you get different results when you're using skinning and moving, you know, deforming geometry with a, you know, some, some sort of pivot point uh, versus morphing like you are uh, with blend shapes. The third important thing is that the way that it understands where these vertices need to go is because vertices have IDs. They have a very specific number and they should match for all the different copies of that geometry so that it knows where it's where it came from and where it's going. So in this example, we can select uh, these guys here and go to display and polygons, component IDs, and turn on the vertices. Now that I've turned this on, we can actually see that um, each vertice has a number. So we can see that this vertice is three, this is three, and that's three there. So when I, drag this, let's say, this PQ2 uh, channel to one, it's going to tell all the vertices to move. Basically, it's going to say, okay, well, vertice three from this original position has to move this direction, this many units uh, to get to match that, that point. Now, if I drive on the second one, it's adding as well. So it knows that to match this, this position, it has to move up a certain amount. But in this case, on top of that, it's moving to the right, so it's going to move this in the other uh, axis. All right, some other things that are important to talk about in blend shapes is you can edit the mesh, the target mesh, after you've created your blend shape deformer. So you can tweak your blend shapes after, after you've, uh, you've actually connected them together. So it gives you the opportunity to create shapes and connect them all together, get everything working, like rig them together within a face or whatever you might be building. And then after that, you can go and refine things. So it's also a nice feature about blend shapes. Once you delete the geometry, it'll still function. But if you wanted to go back and edit it, it takes a little extra work to actually get that geometry back. So you can edit it.